Heart rate variability, the big craze at the moment. You might have seen Aura rings, new Apple Watches, Whoop bands, new Fitbits that track something called your H or B. Let's go through today. Let's see what it's used for. Let's see if it's any use. And then also kind of go through the cons as well and see how we can mitigate any of the negatives that come alongside with it. First and foremost, your H or V is your heart rate variability. And it's the variance in time between the beats of your heart. Now you may wake up and check your Fitbit in the morning and it might say that your resting heart rate is 60 beats per minute. That doesn't mean it's beating one beat every single second. There are discrepancies, like you can see down here, 859 milliseconds, then it could have been 793 milliseconds, then it could be 1.2 seconds. So it's the discrepancy between beats, which is our heart rate variability. What it is, is a measurement of your autonomic nervous system, which is made up of your parasympathetic nervous system and your sympathetic nervous system. We're gonna go through that today. What you need to know is it's a measure to objectively gauge physical fitness as well as readiness to train. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system, if you have an Aura, a, fit, a Fitbit, a Apple Watch, a Whoop, whatever it may be, you will see you'll have your own sort of graph, as you can see down in the bottom left here. They all look a little bit different. If you had all of the devices on your arms and fingers all at the one go, they'll all give you different readings. So they're never going to be massively accurate. They're accurate to themselves. They all have their pitfalls, they're not perfect. And once you know how to use the data, you can use it um, to help you moving forward. But just number one, do not compare your data to anybody else's. It doesn't matter what your says compared to anybody else's. And the second thing is, don't let things like you know, your sleep quality that you can see in your Fitbit app or your HRV in the morning dictate your mood. I can't stress the importance of that enough because there's been plenty of times where I've jumped out of bed, felt great, only to check my Fitbit and said, oh, you only got six hours sleep. And you know, then you're, you kind of have an excuse to be dragging your knuckles for the rest of the day. So don't let it dictate your mood. Down the bottom left here, you will see a graph. These are average HRV readings um, from the age of 20 all the way up to 65. I'm not going to go into these because they don't really make a difference because everybody's HRV readings are very different. How do we know that we are progressing? I'm going to show you now at the end of this slide. So we're looking for a high heart rate variability. That means two sides of your autonomic nervous system are working in cohesion. So you have your parasympathetic state and you have your sympathetic state. Both need to be giving inputs towards your heart and that gives a nice high heart rate variability. There are times where you do want a low heart rate variability, such as during intense exercise, it's going to be highly skewed towards one side. Your sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight response, where you release a lot of adrenaline, epinephrine, things that make you kind of get up and go. So the HRV readings will be low when you're doing things like targeted exercise. Super, super important to note that because we don't want to just have a high HRV all the time. However, if you wake up with a low heart rate variability, it's a very good telltale sign something is wrong one side of your autonomic nervous system is taking over, probably your sympathetic nervous system. It's not allowing the inputs from the parasympathetic nervous system to keep that high heart rate variability. Another way to look at this is if you have a low heart rate variability, let's say you're highly stressed in the morning. So you have high cortisol, high epinephrine, high norepinephrine, and it's just not a good position to be in. You do not have resources to be able to digest food very well, allow recovery, produce serotonin, produce dopamine, and create that balance. So you have a low HRV, and you're maladaptive to be able to have a high output for the day when it comes to being able to train, being able to recover, being able to have an overall productive day. So high heart rate variability in the morning is what we are looking for. Now here is a graph of a HRV readout of the last couple of months from a client of mine. Why I'm showing you this, don't judge your HRV readings off this whatsoever. All we are looking for is an upward trajectory, that's it. The day-to-day, -day, as you can see, the day-to-days don't really matter whatsoever. This is something you should be tracking over several weeks, several months. And then over time, we should see a nice upward trajectory, which is indicating that whatever we are doing at the moment, we are more and more and more ready from the second we wake up in the morning. That's it. Don't even take into consideration these numbers up here or the dates or anything like that. We just need to see you tracking your HRV for a couple of weeks or a couple of months and then checking out that upward trajectory. If things aren't moving in the right direction, something has to change. Now, we're gonna go through a couple of things that are going to impact your HRV in a positive way. So a couple of big bang book ways of improving your HRV readings. First things first, lifestyle-wise. Diet, very, very important. Having a diet mainly consisting of micronutrient-rich foods, whole grains, lean meats, 
legumes, seeds, nuts, beans, all the good stuff, a bit of dairy is going to really help you recover, cover your basis when it comes to micronutrients and perform well, especially in the gym as well. So of course that's going to improve your HRV rating. I'm gonna pair up sleep and alcohol. Very, very important. You release a lot of your growth factors and hormones in your deep sleep. So ensuring that you are having a really quality deep sleep, right supplementation before you go to bed, making sure you're cool in the evenings, making sure you're not abusing the TV before you go to bed, having all that blue light in the back of your eyes. There's lots of things you can put into place. Alcohol, even two glasses of wine or two shots is going to massively impact your sleep quality because your body needs to metabolize the toxin, which is alcohol, before you really get into a deep sleep. And something you may notice when you have a couple of drinks is that you don't really dream for the first couple of hours of the night and then all of a sudden, boom, you get these crazy, crazy ass dreams. Well, that's because you finally metabolize the alcohol and then you get into a deep sleep, but you've missed several hours of deep sleep before that. Stress, super important for us to control our stress levels, leaving work at work, having our me time, unwinding, but also going out and enjoying yourself. Go out for a date night, uh, you know, go out to the cinema, live your life, very, very important. On the training side of things, if your HRV readings are really, really low, that's a telltale sign we're overtraining. So bringing down your volume, so your weights, your reps, your sets, bring down the intensity so not pushing too close to failure or listening to heavy metal and screaming in your sessions, reducing your total exercise workload, just take away an exercise. Lastly, unfamiliar stimulus. So if it's new exercise, maybe you don't run at all and all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm gonna start doing three Ks now or you take up rowing or biking. All these new stimulus are very, very fatiguing on the system. So if you do find your HRV reading is just plummeting, what I would suggest you do is just pull back on the overall workload. So what other applications for HRV is there? So we use it for signs of overtraining. We use it for sleep quality. We use it for stress levels. People are actually often using it for early warning signs of sickness. The UFC are actually using it with all their fighters to see if they're recovered, but also as an early warning sign to see if they have COVID. And there's a lot of recent research going into risk of disease with low HRV readings. Same with mental health as well. So there's lots of applications that HRV is sort of being used for now, but will be massively progressed on in the future. HRV overall is quite new tech. It's only open to the public very, very recently with the likes of Oura Rings, Apple Watches and things like that. It's in its early days. As I said here, the charts we have down on the left are going to look different for every single device you have. Oura Ring, Whoop, Apple Watch, whatever it may be. The only real indicator we know for progress is just seeing an upward trajectory in that graph. So what you need to take from this video is if you're tracking your H or V, you need to scope out. You need to see the big picture over the course of a couple of weeks and a couple of months. Don't get caught up in the day to day ups and lows. There's massive peaks, there's massive troughs. We need to see over time if the efforts you're putting in, you know, managing your load in the gym, being able to get to bed earlier, eating good quality food, we're going to see if that's gonna have an impact over the course of weeks and months. Now, if you have any questions or queries about H or V, or you're struggling how to use your device, or you're thinking about using it, which one to go for, drop myself or another member of the team a message, and we're going to get back to you right away. Chat to you then.